everyone. Welcome to the imagery segment. I'm super excited to be interviewing today with Hilep, CEO and co-founder of Dia Imaging Analysis. Hilep, thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. And uh, I, I, uh, I think uh, to actually to step back, let's give the audience a little bit more context. Again, why we are having this interview. We looked at well over 240 imagery startups. And one of the things that uh, one of the companies that really stood out to us was Dia Imaging Analysis. Uh, and the reason why is the, the, the uniqueness and the approach, especially to ultrasound and, and cardiovascular space. And uh, we, we thought their features were unique, their approach was different. And this is the reason why we think they're one of the best companies within the imagery category globally. Um, so with that, Hila, I think we have a great visual to at least give the audience a baseline, uh, understanding of what you're doing. So I think we'll, We'll cut to that real quick and then we'll get into mm -hmm. questions. Sounds good? Yep. So um, I, I will start by saying that uh, thank you for having me again. And uh, IDEA, um, we established this company several years ago with the main purpose to uh, address the main two challenges that we see within uh, ultrasound in general and ultras point of care ultrasound that they emerging and emerging the last uh, several years, which are how to analyze those images, because mainly uh, today when you're looking at ultrasound, um, the, the analysis is being done by visual estimation, which means just looking at the images and trying to figure out what's wrong, what's going on at the image. And we address this specific uh, challenge, the variability between physician is very high. And also we address the fact of how do you take the image correctly. Because uh, when you look at the MRI, CT, X-ray, when you're posing the patient and posing the device and nobody is moving, with ultrasound is uh, difficult. You have to put the transducer in the right place, and then, you know, the image is much uh, it's it's noisier than MRI and CT, and there are challenges with ultrasound. On the other hand, when you you look at the ultrasound space, which is a seven billion dollar market, and there is a big big change in the last four years. We see that more and more portable handheld devices are being used in, in what we call the point of care, the emergency room, ICU, and intensive care, and, and even, even family physicians and primary care physicians. And with that change came a bigger challenge of new users with limited knowledge and experience of how to analyze those images and the big uh, opportunity for DIA uh, to provide those AI automated solution to help us physician analyze those images in a very quick, objective way so they can triage and, and understand what to do next and to, to eliminate almost the, the variability between the physicians when they're doing the visual estimation. So that's in general about DIA. Uh, and uh, go ahead, you know, we, we have a lot of things that we want to, to talk about, but I let you lead the, the questions. Awesome. I think there's a really good, um, good breakdown. Before I even get into the product itself, I'm curious, is there a backstory about why you created DIA? Yeah, so uh, um, DIA was established uh, about uh, almost eight years ago uh, here in Israel. I'm based in Israel. And um, it was part of an incubator program that we have here in Israel. It's a government program where when you have a, an idea, and the government give you some money, but very, you know, for one or two people to, to run for like a two years project. And uh, my partner, uh, she, Michal, which is the CEO of the company, uh, she came up with the idea as part of her master degree. And, to, and, and she met Dr. Liel, the head, Liel, the head of the echocardiography unit in one of the biggest hospitals here in Israel. And back then, you know, it was before AI, before people understood what, what, what do you mean by computer doing your work or, or helping you. And we figured out what, why, why are you doing it by, by visual estimation, if, if specifically in cardiac ultrasound. And, and Dr. Liad, which, which, as I mentioned, was the head of the echocardiography unit, she mentioned, listen, we are making so much mistakes and, and the variability is, is very high. And, and when I'm leaving my, my interns at night and coming in the morning and seeing the, the, the decisions that they make, and I, I, I don't understand what, what they're seeing. And basically, you know, in ultrasound, you are trying to train your eye. You are trying to train your own AI in order to, 
you know, you repeat uh, those patterns and, and identify those abnormalities and it's taking a long time. It's like me, more than 15 years in order to be a very good uh, echocardiographer, ultrasound uh, um, um, user. And that was the case when we say, why not trying to ease that? Why not bring in more objective information to, to, so they, they, they can make decision based on the very objective uh, information? And this is how we started the company. Uh, way before you know, anybody imagined that AI will evolve in this way. And even before uh, the point of care ultrasound uh, trend emerged which happens like two, three years after that. Interesting. And, and, and actually to highlight on this, it's, it's, it seems as though you guys started with cardiac ultrasound and, it, and now kind of expanding off of that. Now I'll get into that in just a sec, but um, to, to give the audience perspective, because we've, we've, we've seen a handful of different ways you can use a variety of different image products. Why ultrasound? Can you give us an idea of what are the settings in which a provider needs to use point of care ultrasound and in, in this case for uh, in cardiovascular patients? So why ultra, ultrasound? You know, that's the question. It's a question that I've been asked a lot because ultrasound, as I mentioned, is a very difficult image and specifically very difficult to apply AI for because, because the variability of how you take the image and it's, it's pretty, it's really noisy compared to MR, CT, X-ray. Although the image quality got better during, during the last two decades, but still it's very noisy. And, you know, some people say, you know, you're crazy, why did you go there? <laughs> uh, but yeah, the challenge, the challenge and also the, the understanding that we really believe that at that point and, and we were very successful through those years to figure out how to handle that kind of an image. And we did understood the need because ultrasound doesn't have radiation and it's not expensive as, as MRI. And, and we, are, we understood that this, the ultrasound market is evolving and more and more you know, new users are getting into this market in a way that eventually every physician will carry like a handheld device that will connect to their own phone. But if you don't provide, will not provide them those AI solutions that help them through the work uh, flow on an everyday basis, it will not work. And, and it, that, this is the missing part that you have to figure out. And why we started with cardiac, because cardiac is the most difficult uh, organ to analyze. If you look at it, it's, it's, it's moving. It's had various areas that you have to look and each area have different clinical aspects. And it's the biggest market or one of the biggest uh, segments in market in, within ultrasound. So for us, we said we have to attack that and then we can expand to other areas that probably will be, be slightly easier, but, uh, uh, but eventually address you know, the whole uh, ultrasound space in terms that we can apply the same technology and know-how that we have of how to develop that kind of solutions and apply it to different anatomic areas. Interesting. And, and, and to be even more specific, how is, is, are you providing the software and the actual ultrasound device too? Or are you, can you work with any type no. of ultrasound solution? So all of our AI solutions are vendor neutral and cross-platform. It can work on any image and on any uh, ultrasound uh, device or healthcare IT system, but we are not selling it together with a device. We are actually partnered with, partnering with channel partners, um, both ultrasound uh, vendors and healthcare IT companies, that they offer our AI solution as an add-on solution on their systems. We already have eight channel partners and that we are working with, and it's just it's expanding uh, dramatically through the year, and uh, we are going to announce several more uh, very soon. And for example, when we work with GE uh, in that case, so on their handheld ultrasound device, as probably you, you can see here on the screen, we apply our AI solution, they offer it to the end users, and you can see here that with one click, uh, very easily, you get the, the uh, global function of the left ventricle of the heart near the bedside, 
in a few seconds, very easily to operate. And that gives you a very clear understanding of what is the global function of, of the heart of the patient. And then uh, you can triage and, and, and decide what to do next. So this is a good example of showing also the value and how easy it works. And the fact that we can add it to any ultrasound device unit or a healthcare IT system very easily. Uh, up to date, we have uh, six FDA and CE Mark uh, products, um, most of them in the cardiac space because this is the space that we started with different uh, clinical value, both for the left ventricle and the right ventricle. We recently uh, received FDA approval for additional two. A product, one for the right ventricle and the other for the abdominal, for the bladder volume uh, automated analysis. So that, as you mentioned, what happened when we extended uh, uh, outside the cardiac space. And uh, in our roadmap, we are developing additional solutions for various er areas, both in the chest area and the abdominal, and then specifically providing that kind of tool set uh, to clinicians that are using uh, ultrasound. Interesting. Well, it, it definitely makes sense. And, and, and taking a, even a couple steps back to your point earlier, mm -hmm. why you focused on ultrasound. It's a, the most practical product to get into a variety of different hospitals and providers. Uh, but also, like you mentioned, the hardest uh, to understand and analyze. Uh, and the solution that you've built, being able to integrate with a variety of different solutions is fantastic. I mean, that's it's really a, almost, a, in this case, a, a huge competitive advantage, uh, but also makes it a lot easier for everybody else in the ecosystem. But, uh, but the features that you built, you know, you have just specifically for uh, cardiovascular patients, you have things like you're actually able to quantify ejection fraction. You can quantify wall motion analysis. You can quantify a handful of things, like actually quantify it. How did you build this functionality? Where does this, where'd you get the data set? Um, yeah. It's how accurate is this? Like, uh, curious, this is really impressive work. So, um, how do we build our AI solutions? So, um, I, we do have access uh, to huge databases uh, through our collaboration with uh, more than 12 uh, medical facilities, both uh, here in Israel, in the States, and even in, in, in Brazil. And we're working with several hospitals. This is where we're getting our data. This is where we're doing our beta sites, clinical studies, the clinical study, the multi-center clinical studies that we need to do for the FDA approvals. And once we get that kind of uh, access and tagging and be able to um, filter, uh, we call it the noise, um, uh, we are able to uh, apply our technology. When I'm saying our technology, it's a combination between image processing, machine learning, and deep learning. It's not like we're doing only one thing. And this is one of our competitive advantage. We, today, after several years, have the know-how know -how of how to combine it. When we look at the image today, we know what kind of technology will apply best and what kind of combination between them uh, will give the best results. A very important thing that we are doing in, internally is that we are making sure that our engineers, our algorithm engineers, understand also the clinical aspect of what they're developing. Uh, almost in a way that they can do the uh, vi virtual or, or the, 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 um, the analysis, the eyeballing by themselves. And where they're sitting constantly with physicians and, and uh, ultrasound users to understand what they are looking for when they're looking at the, an ultrasound image. And that's what allows us to be very accurate. And to, from, the, from day one, when we are you know, defining what we want to, to develop, to make sure that everybody is aligned and we truly understand what we are looking and what we want the AI solution to provide. And so that's, that's in, the, in, in the much you know, higher level of understanding. Of course, that there is a term in, in the imaging space called garbage in, garbage out. Uh, which means that, you know, if you bring garbage in, you will get garbage out. And that's why the filtering and what we are bringing to the AI and our machine learning uh, infrastructure is very important. And we are 
you know, doing a lot of QA in terms that the garbage will not get in and, and that the AI system will not learn um, from garbage information. Um, so that is a work in progress and also, you know, go, going back and forth with versions. Eventually we're closing a version when we feel that, you know, the results are, are uh, really good and, and, and we get the confirmation from our KOLs and our advisory board, our clinical advisory board, with going through those, you know, images and doing data sites. And, and eventually, yeah, we, we're, you know, releasing those kind of products as you saw, so on the GE device. Uh, which, you know, those kind of corporate companies are doing a lot of validation before releasing anything to, to their end users. And we were able to, to excel that uh, very, um, you know, good results. Awesome. Well, and, and I kind of want to follow up on this point and, and to, to highlight it to the audience just so that they understand the importance of this, because the traditional process was eyeballing ultrasound and then trying to yep. figure out whether or not triage patients build out a surgical workflow, et cetera. Um, in, in, in your case, you've now built a tool that allows truly to quantify lots of pieces of the heart that prepares, at least for a lot of providers, gives them the tools necessary to build out what should the next, best, next steps be for in their workflow. But I'm curious because we're starting to see this a lot within AI, or in, AI imagery or AI sys tools within the space is, you know, are you going as far as suggesting uh, what providers should be doing in their next close floor or making a diagnosis or almost suggesting a diagnosis? Or is this purely here's the data and you make the decisions on your behalf, however you want? So for now, what what we are providing under our FDA approval uh, solution is uh, supporting tools and under the 510K class 2, uh, which means that we are not providing diagnostic tools, but uh, um, su supporting uh, systems. And, and if I look at it in a more uh, holistic way and, and looking at, at the future, I think uh, there are two, la two layers to what we are seeing within AI and specifically within healthcare and imaging. So the first layer, and, and one of our KOLs uh, just talked about it in, in one of our webinars, is that right now we need your, we are using AI solution within ultrasound to support our decision. We're not sure, we want to get a confirmation, we want to get a, like a second opinion, like an expert sitting under their, our shoulder looking and when we don't have anybody around and we want to make sure that they, we're not missing things and if we are seeing something that also the AI, the computer is seeing the same thing. In what they are seeing, the, the providers and, and the, the clinicians that are using the RAI uh, solution are seeing a, a change in their workflow in a way that once you trust the AI and you see that it's aligned with things that you are looking at, and even help you in places that you probably would have missed without using it, then you trust it more and then um, you're not second guess it and you are taking those inf this information as a clear objective information that you can rely on. Of course, that we are, do think that the mm -hmm. second layer, which will come through the years, is connecting between the dots. And for example, if we do see something in the left ventricle and then in the right ventricle and connecting it with other par parameters like blood test or whatever, then definitely the next step will be, listen, we do see, see, do see something here and maybe you should look at that because usually according to articles, according to I don't know what, this means that something is wrong. I think the second layer still will be a supporting tool. It will not be suggesting how to treat the patient, but just to flag all kinds of abnormalities, but also connecting the dots. So this is what we see in the future. And, 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 and definitely it's, it will be something that will take several years before you can actually you know, rely on those kind of systems and, and, and make them very accurate. 
Interesting. Um, and it makes sense. Um, we have our physician mention uh, something very similar with autopilot pilot in, in, in flights that initially think of how autopiloting mm -hmm. happened. And initially, you know, you, you still need the, the pilot to be there. But once those systems got evolved and, and got, you know, were very reliable, then, you know, the pilot is sitting, is not, you know, operating the, the, the plane, but just interfering when there is a, a something wrong, wrong or there is need for his uh, interference. Yeah, interesting. No, and, and it's, a, it's a great analogy. And I know we only got a couple minutes left, so I'll, I'll stick with just a couple questions left. Um, especially in this space, we see a lot of companies really struggle uh, with trying to sell directly to providers, et cetera. Healthcare software has very long sales cycles. Sometimes it's really difficult to work with a variety of different stakeholders. You've taken a unique approach. It seems like you work with a lot of channel partners. I mean, how have you managed this difficult process of trying to just get your product out there? So yeah, so we, we figure out the, exactly what you mentioned and we saw the other companies str struggling to um, sell directly to providers. So from day one, our approach was let's partner with those providers that already have the access, already out there, already have the accounts. And also we can help them in, with our AI solution to sell more. So eventually it's a win-win. So that, that was our approach and, and, and very fast, you know, last year we started, you know, approaching the market through those channel partners. And within less than a year, we, we are at more than 20 countries and, and with over 3000 end users that decided to buy our AI solution in one way or the other. And that showed us that this business model is actually is the right way to go. I must say that the, the disadvantage is that the sales cycle and the, to, to, to close those kind of channel partners agreement and to do the integration and bring it to the market is over. But once you, you figure it out and, and have that done, the exposure, you know, you have you know, hundreds of sell reps talking about your product immediately. So this is what allows us to, to get into the market uh, pretty fast, which as a small startup and, and startup in general, it's very difficult to do on your own. So that, that approach uh, came along. And also we see it during this uh, pandemic uh, situation. Uh, uh, for example, with, with, with our partners, uh, with the GE, with the handheld devices, a point of care physician today, um, you know, treating uh, COVID patients using more and more ultrasound devices like handheld devices, because it's easy to clean. You keep it in the ward. Uh, you can do it immediately and see the assessment of the heart. The virus not only affected the, the lungs, but also the heart. So we did saw an increased use of our AI solution during this pandemic uh, situation and got a lot of good feedbacks from clinicians at the front line with COVID patients, w working with our AI solution, putting the, the transducer one click, getting the AI solutions and the results immediately, seeing if there's an increase or damage to the heart with the treatment, or if they have to treat, they change the treatment because of uh, how the virus affects the heart. And that is a good example of showing how at the, at the point of care, when you are alone with the mask, with everything, you don't have an expert to help you, and how AI can come along in this situation and give you that kind of an aid. Fantastic. Well, I know we're, we're, we're at the end of time here, but you already answered my last few questions, which is kind of how the <laughs> pandemic affected you and also really what you envision or what's the future of imagery. Um, so with that, Ila, is there anything else before I close out that you wanted to announce or share or ask of the audience? Um, just to say that uh, we are, you know, we are making progress. We're going to release additional AI solutions. We are going to announce several more partnerships and uh, we're always looking for more partners to, to um, uh, offer our solution. We also working directly with hospitals, which is our, you know, last uh, prefer we prefer to work through channel partners, but definitely can work directly. In terms of uh, um, uh, fundraising, we are funded, but we are um, um, heading to our next investment round. And uh, yeah, that, that was fun. Uh, thank you for having me. And yeah.
know, hopefully soon we will be able to meet face to face. Yeah, hopefully. And, and Hila, thank you so much again for doing this. I really appreciate it. And uh, again, for context, again, for the audience, it's well over 240 companies that we looked at. And you've already heard from yourself, why Idea is one of the best companies in the category. It's, it's their approach. It's their distribution. It's their method of how they care for patients, the simplicity of how they integrate with a lot of different solutions. So uh, we, this is why we thought they were one of the best companies. And now this is... Now you have a little bit more in-depth insight as to, as to why that is. So thank you so much again for doing this. I really appreciate it.